Welcome to Unwired Learning. In this video, we're going to talk about carrier drift in a semiconductor. The goals for this video are to describe the physical phenomenon of carrier drift, derive an equation for induced drift current due to an electric field, and thirdly, to relate that equation of drift current to Ohm's law. Over here on the left, we have a picture of a piece of semiconductor, and what we've done is we've attached a voltage to it. And when we attach a voltage, that generates an electric field in this device. And what we find is that because there's a positive potential on one side and a negative potential on the other, the electrons will be attracted to that positive side and will drift towards the positive side. And holes, oppositely, they will go and drift towards the negative side. In order to understand this fully, there's a few things we'll define about this particular piece of semiconductor. First, we'll define the area as A and the length of this device as L. The first step in understanding drift current is to first look at the carrier movement without an electric field. In this case, we're going to look at a charge carrier. This charge carrier in a semiconductor could be an electron or it could be a hole. What we find is as that carrier gets energy, this could be thermal energy, then that carrier will move around in this device and it will randomly move around until it scatters with another carrier or an atom or some other force. And that scattering causes that carrier to kind of bounce around randomly. But there is no net movement. If we look at the area around that carrier, we won't see any net flow of carriers in one direction or the other. Instead, what we'll find is that the carriers are just bouncing around randomly, but relatively staying pretty much exactly where you would expect them to be. However, as soon as we introduce an electric field, then the carriers will start to move. And in this case, we're going to illustrate this idea with a hole. Yes, there will still be scattering and bouncing around, but on net, what we're going to find is that carrier is drifting or moving in a net direction. So there's some net flow for this carrier. The same thing could be said for an electron in this system. However, the electron will act oppositely to the electric field. So instead of moving from left to right, as the hole did with the electric field pointing from left to right, the electron will instead be moving in the opposite direction of the electric field. So if this red pointer is the electron, then what we're going to find is that electron is going to bounce around and scatter against other atoms and other electrons, but it will have a net flow in the direction to the left. Now let's move on to the math. We know from physics that drift current density, which is given as J, and we'll define J sub drf as drift current, so we cannot confuse that with other types of current. That value, J drift, is equal to rho times the drift velocity, where rho is the volume charge density of the material. It's useful for us to, to break down this equation in terms of units so we can understand what's going on. First, let's start with rho. Well, we have rho times drift velocity. And in terms of units, that is given as some charge per volume. So that would be coulombs per cubic centimeter. And drift velocity, well, just like any other velocity, that's some unit distance divided by time. So in this case, we'll have our unit be centimeters per second. Now this is useful to us because now what we recognize is we have a charge, and we have some volume, and we have our velocity. It might be useful to understand how we're going to derive the full equation for drift velocity by breaking out those units. First, let's break out coulombs. So over here, we're gonna have something with units of coulombs. Then we'll have something with units of per cubic centimeter. Then we'll have our drift velocity in units of centimeters per second. So let's start with these first two items. Well, coulombs is just the unit of charge. So for us, being that our carriers are either electrons or holes, we will write that as E 
to represent the unit of charge for an electron or a hole. And in semiconductor physics, we know that the density of carriers is given in units of 1 over centimeters cubed. So it must be the case that we have some density of carriers in this case. And since we've been talking about holes and we've been using holes, let's go ahead and write down that our density of carriers is P to represent the number of holes in this system. So we have now that the drift current is equal to the charge E times the number of holes per volume P times the drift velocity. Now to understand how to break down drift velocity, we first need to think about Newton's law. Here we know that a force equals mass times acceleration. Well in this case, what do we have that is causing the acceleration? Well, what we have is an electric field, and we have a charge carrier that has some either attraction or repelling from that electric field force. So we can say that F equals MA equals the electric charge times the electric field. And this is the equation of motion for a hole induced by an electric field. But this doesn't completely answer the question of what is drift velocity. Well, in this case, what we have to remember is that when a hole moves around due to an electric field, in this case actually a whole volume of holes in this material, these guys are scattering and bouncing about. And what we do is we take the relative motion of these guys as they're moving in the presence of this electric field, and we consider an average drift velocity. And in order to do that, we come up with a new proportionality factor that we call the mobility of the carrier. In this case, since it's a hole, we'll call this proportionality factor the hole mobility. And that proportionality factor is given to us as mu p. So now we're pretty close to being able to define what is drift velocity. So in this case, drift velocity is given to us as mu p times the electric field. This also means we can now define the units for mobility. And in this case, the units for mobility are centimeters squared per volt seconds. Combining these ideas into the drift current equation, combining these eyes into the drift current density equation, J drift, what we find is that J drift is equal to the charge, E, times the number of carriers, P, per unit volume, times the mobility of those carriers, times the electric field. Now this in particular gives us the drift current density, but not of all the carriers in the system, only the holes. We can also derive the drift current density equation for the electron. In this case, since an electron has a negative charge, we'll write negative E times the density of carriers N. And since the movement or the velocity of the carrier's uh, electrons are in the opposite direction of the electric field, we can write minus mu sub N times the electric field. Combining these, we see that the two negatives cancel each other out and we get E N mu sub N times E. In these two equations, the drift current for the holes and the drift current for the electrons can be combined into a final equation for the total drift current density. And that total drift current density would be given as E times the quantity mu n n plus mu p p times the electric field acting upon those carriers. And this is our final equation for drift current density. In a now let's take a look at how the drift current density equation that we derived earlier relates to Ohm's law. As a reminder, the drift current density equation is given as J equals the charge E times the mobility of carriers times the volume density of carriers times the electric field. The first way that we can look at this and relate it to Ohm's law is by looking at unit analysis. First, let's look at the unit E. E is simply coulombs. Next, let's look at the unit of mobility. Mobility is given as centimeters squared per volt seconds. Now, let's look at the charge density of carriers. 
that unit is 1 over centimeters cubed. And finally, let's look at the value of the electric field. The electric field is given as volts per unit distance. Let's take a particularly close look at the first three units. And let's recombine them so that we have coulombs per second times 1 over volts times 1 over centimeters. We may recall that centimeters per second is actually amps. So we have amps per volt times 1 over centimeters. Then, if we remember, well, amps per volt is actually 1 over a resistance, omega. So our final units for the first three terms are 1 over omega centimeters. And it is this insight that gives rise to a new parameter, and that parameter is sigma, the conductance parameter. So now we have J equals sigma times the electric field. And as promised, we're going to do some algebra to manipulate this equation and show how it relates to Ohm's law. We're going to substitute for J, and we're going to substitute for E. Since J is a current density, then it must be the case that J is a current per area. And we already know that the electric field is volts per distance, L. Making these substitutions, we have current, I, over the area A is equal to sigma times volts over length. And we can already start to see how this relates to Ohm's law, but let's do a little bit of rearranging. Let's isolate V on one side and I on the other and combine all the other terms. So we'll have I times L over sigma times the area is equal to a voltage that must mean that this value is our resistance. So let's remind ourselves of the units of each of these just to verify. The units of L, well, that's just a distance. The units of area, well, that would be a distance squared. And we already know from the previous exploration that sigma is 1 over ohms centimeters. Doing the algebra, we can easily see that in fact this combination of L over sigma times the area, A, is a resistance, R. And therefore we can conclude that V does in fact equal IR for the semiconductor. And with this, that concludes this video of Unwired Learning.